Hi everyone, my name is Mira Jeffrey Craft, and for my capstone, I put together a digital marketing strategy. Here is the agenda for this presentation. I will be going over the key components of this marketing strategy and will allow for a Q&A at the end. The key components include one, driving social media engagement through digital activations, two, press coverage and podcasting, three, Spotify playlist promotion, four, brand partnerships, five, a virtual concert event, and six, a post-concert fan and press outreach. Now, along with many others, uh, pop artist Tate McRae, who's made her career on TikTok during quarantine, have had many mixed feelings about what it's like to really be an artist during this age of COVID. Um, in an interview with iHeartRadio, here's what she had to say. So, right. Is it kind of frustrating in that way, though? Because you like your career is obviously taking off. So do you feel like you like don't get all the benefits of that because we're stuck at home? I mean, there's some things that I definitely wish could have happened. Like, I really wanted to wish me like Alicia Keys at the EMAs, but that it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> um, but I think there's a lot of like blessings at the same time. The fact that I can literally just be home and not traveling everywhere at all times. Um, that could be exhausting in a way, trying to finish school and get everything done. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really interesting process just being in your room but yet doing things globally, um, like interviews and stuff. So it, it's it's something that I'm still adapting to for sure. As you just heard from an artist herself, launching anything during COVID has brought among many untraditional challenges, but also some benefits. Because of this, I wanted to create a digital marketing strategy for an artist who's launching uh, their latest EP amidst a global pandemic. Why? Well, let's take a listen to a recent news report that covers, you know, just how devastating COVID has been on the music industry and the artists. Concerts are canceled. A lot of them. With large gatherings limited or prohibited due to the coronavirus, many artists are now performing online for free. This change has upended the live music business. The industry was on track to generate nearly $30 billion this year before the pandemic hit. Now, analysts project a 75% drop in global revenue, down to $6.5 billion. With the industry in crisis, artists and producers are reimagining concerts, but without crowds. And some of these new shows are already attracting millions of fans globally. Going to a concert and being in a big crowd that's one live experience, but doesn't mean that it's the only live experience. Now the question is whether they'll also be able to bring in the cash. As the video explains, artists and labels were forced to quickly devise alternatives to in-person gatherings, all of which required a lot of adapting and maximizing of modern social media capabilities. The strategy that I've created utilizes and emphasizes the shift to a very digital space that allows artists to continue to release new content and stay engaged with fans, but more importantly, continue to generate revenue. In terms of the implementation process, the how of um, putting this entire project together, I incorporated the information that I've accumulated from past courses I've taken at Berkeley. Um, I reached out to a recent boss of mine who's the CEO of a music technology company to get his take on where he sees the future of the music industry after COVID. I also called a few venues in New York and Canada to get information that would be helpful in determining, you know, what venue I wanted the artist Chloe Cutler to perform at for her virtual TikTok concert. And then I used uh, Google and other sources to find uh, credible information that I could include in my project. So here's a brief you know, artist background on Chloe Cutler. She is a 21 year old pop dance artist from Canada who's now living in New York City. Her target demographic is Gen Z or 18 to 25 year olds. Her first gig was in 2016 and she rose to popularity after her song Lucky went viral on YouTube. She's currently signed to UMG as one of the youngest faces on the roster. And her aim with releasing 
uh, the EP Colors is to bring fans and people together during this time of isolation and distance. The EP will be available on April 4th, 2021, and will be sold on Chloe Cutler's official website, chloecutlerofficial.com. Pre-saves available in late March of 2021. Here on this slide, you'll see an exclusive first look at the EP's album cover art that I created. And once again, this will all be made public to the fans on launch day, April 4th, 2021. The first key component of this digital marketing strategy is driving social media engagement with digital activations. Between 46 and 51% of U.S. adults were using social media more since the outbreak began. But the question is why? Here's what Kimberly Lee, VP of Resource Developing at MHA, had to say on the topic. Kimberly Lee with the Mental Health Association in Springfield tells Western Mass News that during this time of distancing, social media can play a positive role in bringing us together. It really is physical distancing really not social distancing and so social media is just that social media so it's an opportunity for us to stay connected to stay informed because of this prolonged isolation that people were facing many turned to the social media platforms like instagram snapchat twitter and especially tiktok to gain some human interaction back digitally Artists and labels soon began to realize that there could be some benefits of fan engagement by using social media. And they were like, hey, let's build campaign activations on and around them. This brings me to the first digital activation of Chloe Cutler's uh, marketing plan, which is Instagram. And so she'll be taking advantage of this platform by posting numeric countdowns on her page that will count down the days to the album's release or the EP's release. Um, she'll also host a 30 minute live Q&A with fans that will engage and discuss the possible songs that might be on colors. She'll also utilize the stories feature and launch a scavenger hunt that'll drop hints as to the location of where this TikTok live stream event might take place. Uh, there'll be 15 second clips posted every other week leading up to the event itself and they'll all contain image clues. There's only going to be 10 winners of this contest um, who are going to be allowed 10 guests with them into the stadium arena. And uh, this will adhere to the 100 person or less at a gathering COVID restriction. The second digital activation is Twitter. And on Twitter, she's going to be posting uh, teaser lyric tweets, which will um, heighten fans curiosity and also drive tweets her tweets up on the algorithm so that it'll gain more exposure. She's also going to post the album cover preview to spike some fan chatter. And also, um, she's going to launch a hashtag campaign uh, mixed with a virtual meet and greet using the hashtag let my color show. And so the winners of this contest or the, of this hashtag campaign will be able to attend a 15 minute virtual meet and greet um, after the conclusion of the TikTok live stream concert. Um, and as many of you know, meet and greets have been really hard to come by now that isolation and social distancing is a thing. So integrating a meet and greet into this plan is vital. Next up, Chloe Cutler will be taking advantage of her official website. On this official website, there will be a subscription mailing list that is launched using MailChimp, where fans will be able to stay up to date on all news Chloe Cutler. Um, she'll also have exclusive merchandise available on her website, much like what Travis Scott did with his Astral World merch. So the first 200 people who log into the live stream the TikTok live stream will be giving, given an exclusive code that they can use for 50% off their entire purchase. So this adds a lot of incentive um, on the day of the TikTok live stream for people to log on first, get engaged, and spread the word on the event. TikTok has become the holy grail of digital activations in the music industry. It's become a huge turning point. 
And because of this, um, Chloe will be utilizing the platform by hosting a viral dance challenge featuring TikTok's it girl, Charlie D'Amelio. And the hope with this is that fans will be able to engage with the post and duet it. Um, and this will push Chloe's content up onto the uh, TikTok algorithm and it'll be able to be seen on the homepage, also known as the For You page. She'll also engage fans in a TikTok album cover challenge using, using the hashtag Cutler cover challenge. Um, and this challenge essentially allows users of the app to get really creative and turn ordinary or humorous moments into an album cover. Um, this has the cap capability to go really viral and is a great way to connect with fans. Lastly, and most importantly, she will be hosting a live stream concert event sponsored by Verizon and Budweiser, which will be streamed on this TikTok platform. And this is where she's going to debut and perform her Colors EP. And lastly, we have Snapchat. So with Snapchat, there will be a geo filter created for the live concert event. And a geo filter is essentially a social media image overlay that you can put on your Snapchat um, that can be accessed from a specific location. And that'll give details on the event and um, it allows for fans to get really creative. So those who win the Instagram album cover contest will be able to attend the concert in person. So they'll be able to take pictures and videos of the event and post it onto their Snapchat, their personal Snapchat pages, and use this geo filter to then spread the word and hopefully engage their friends to come watch the event. The next extremely vital key component of this entire digital marketing strategy is press coverage and podcasting. So pre-COVID, radio and newspaper coverage should have been sufficient enough to um, really carry a campaign. However, post-COVID, it was reported that 70% of people reported concerns when reading a delivered print magazine, journal, catalog, or newspaper. So this accelerated a shift in consumption to the digital sphere and caused global uh, podcast listens to increase and boom over 42%. So this is something that needs to be emphasized on going forward. So here are a few of the um, press outlets that the EP will be featured in. Uh, so on a digital platform, it will be Billboard, Brooklyn Magazine, and the Rolling Stones in New York. Uh, in Canada, the Music Express and Spill Magazine. And touching upon the international fan base, uh, we'll be looking at the UK. So NME and The Wire are perfect digital platforms and newspapers for colors to be featured in. So as you can see here, um, this is the Zayn Low Apple podcast. And to put it simply, it is an artist's rite of passage. Uh, this popular radio DJ was recruited in 2014 to oversee programming of Beats One and Apple, the Apple Music Station. So podcasting will provide Chloe with the opportunity and exposure to converse and build trust through creative storytelling. Not only that, but um, being able to be placed on a podcast puts your content and your brand as an artist in front of millions of more people because they can easily just download the podcast, especially if they have Apple already, onto their phone and listen to you on the go. And over time, that will build fan loyalty and hopefully expand your following. The third key component is Spotify playlisting promotion. Playlisting promotion is the concept of pitching music to independent third party playlist curators. And so the benefit of this route is that playlists with a good number of followers will get your music in front of thousands of more listeners. Um, that means that there is a greater chance of more streams globally on the day of release, which is essentially the goal. And as you can see here on the right, there is the timeline and budget of this key component. The next step is how. How do you get your music onto a playlist? 
So first you upload, what we would do is upload colors, the EP, to Spotify for artists. Then we build a lot of interest over time and pitch it to curators. Then we'd utilize the mailing list to uh, gain engagement and interest with our fan base and run a pre-save campaign on Spotify. The top tier promotional playlists that we would like to get colors on are Release Radar, New Music Friday, and Chill Vibes, all of which have a great following and are really specific to the genre that Chloe fits. What's really, really important though is getting on Release Radar because it's filled with all genres. And there's only one follower, and that would be you. That this, this playlist is personally curated and built for the individual themselves. And so what it does is it listens to your listening habits and the genres that you mostly listen to and culminates them into this one playlist. So this is great for building exposure to colors as well as the playlist. The fourth key component is artist and brand partnerships. COVID, as you all know, has wiped out a lot of the income for major artists as well as independents. So as a result, they've turned to brand partnerships as a source of revenue. Because of the isolation and the distance that comes with COVID, dating apps as a result have boomed. Tinder and Bumble have actually just launched a video dating feature on their apps, which opens up an entirely new avenue for partnership opportunities. Here's what the CEO of Bumble and Tinder, Whitney Wolf Heard, ha uh, has to say on COVID and how it's affected online dating and how it'll be affected moving forward. Whitney, we all debate every day on, on CNBC uh, what the likely uh, bounce back will be for places like restaurants and bars. Do, do you think it might be a bit weaker, therefore, than, than uh, some expect based on more dating virtually? You know, it's, it's interesting. I've always said that our biggest competitor is the restaurants and the bars. And it's fascinating to see people flock to a digital opportunity. I certainly hope for the sake of, of the world's health and, and the well-being that we can we can get back to uh, business as soon as possible. But we, uh, we, we fundamentally believe that digital dating is not going anywhere. This serves a real, um, real you know, valuable uh, place in people's lives, whether it's love or friendship or business. We offer business connections. We offer friendship. And so I, I really encourage everybody right now to lean into these digital connections while we all remain safe at home. As you just heard Whitney explain, People need to start leaning into dating apps as a source of connection and business moving forward. And one way to do this is by integrating this into our marketing plan by facilitating a virtual date with a fan. So in this activation, Chloe will team up with Tinder to conduct a virtual date with a lucky fan. And not only does this build excitement around the EP, but it also brings more users on to sign up for Tinder. So it's a mutually beneficial uh, arrangement. So a DM will be sent to the winner for permission to record their 40 minute virtual date. And if they say yes, then it will be posted to all of Chloe's socials after the event. So this is a really, really great way to take advantage of the pros and cons of COVID and turn them into something beneficial to the artist as well as beneficial to a brand such as Tinder. Now, getting to the most exciting part of the marketing plan, which is launching a TikTok virtual concert event. And so as you can see on this slide here, this uh, below, you'll see the timeline and budget um, with the approximations for about how much this is gonna cost, along with a quote from my former boss, who is the CEO of a music technology company, New Agency. And within this quote, um, he explains kind of his predictions for how the industry is going to look moving forward uh, past COVID. Here on this slide, you'll see the event details as well as the schematics for Budweiser Gardens in Ontario, Canada, where the TikTok live stream will be taking place. In terms of ticketing and monetization, since this is a virtual concert, this will be done a bit differently than it would traditionally. So it will be free admission for all attendees. However, monetization will be available through TikTok 
and all 50% uh, of the proceeds will be going to a small business and 50% of the proceeds will actually be going back into the artist's pocket. So how this works is TikTok users can actually buy coins that will translate into real money via an in-app purchase. And to make things even cooler and even, is that uh, since we're teaming up with Verizon, uh, Verizon customers will gain access to exclusive camera angles um, using their Verizon mobile app. So this is once again, another incentive to bring people to watch this live concert event. And now the final key component of this entire strategy, post-concert fan and press outreach. As you know, meet and greets have always been a very, very important part of how artists connect with fans and build loyalty to one another. So even though COVID has wiped out this opportunity to be in person and face to face, this is something that cannot be excluded from a plan. So similarly to how the band Why Don't We teamed up with live platforms to host a timed meet and greet, Chloe will be doing the same. It will, there will be a 15 minute exclusive virtual meet and greet after her TikTok concert, where the winners of the Twitter campaign event, hashtag show my colors, can log in and participate and then ask her questions and she can engage with them afterwards. This allows for her to once again connect and add a bit of soul to the entire experience. Finally, moving on to the components here. So negating the 15 minute virtual meet and greet along with the 50-50 split of revenue uh, there will be exclusive merchandise available on Chloe's website and a Rolling Stones wrap-up interview. Lastly will be the publication of this Colors EP digital marketing strategy. And this is to give labels, artists, promoters, managers an opportunity to use this as a blueprint to help them navigate any upcoming releases that they may have in the near future, with COVID still weighing very heavily over our heads. This slide here illustrates the finalized timeline and budget of this entire project. Uh, we were given 40K as the maximum allotted budget for the project. Thankfully, because digital marketing allows for lower cost than traditional, we were able to stay under that 40K mark at around 35K. Now to my project analysis and evaluation. Uh, for how it turned out, I think it turned out very successful. I was able to lay out all the steps and creative solutions for how to promote and hold a campaign and virtual concert event in this age of COVID. Um, I was also able to determine you know, how to maintain and grow engagement in a strictly digital landscape. And I also was able to identify the different ways that labels and artists were able to pivot during this time and reach their fans and build upon them. I think all of this knowledge will serve me really well moving forward as I become a professional in the industry. Thank you all for listening. That concludes my project presentation. And if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.